Some breaking news in a CBS Sports HQ. Per multiple reports, the NBA Players Association has voted to approve a December 22nd start date and a 72-game regular season. Again, season set to start on December 22nd will be shortened by 10 games, but we got basketball coming for real next month. Joined now by CBS Sports NBA analyst Bill Ryder here to break all what we know down. Bill, exciting news here for NBA fans as we will get NBA basketball the week of Christmas. Wrap it up, put it under the tree. It's the only thing we asked for. The players, however, were asking for a mid-January start date to the season. What transpired over the last couple weeks here in negotiations? Yeah, Joey, as I talked to folks around the NBA, there was a growing sense really of resignation from the players that despite what they wanted, and you're right, they wanted to play in January. If they could, they would have they would have pushed it back to February. But there was a growing sense of resignation that the math and the financials behind the NBA getting over that 70 game mark because of TV contracts, starting when they're going to start was worth, in Adam Silver's words, about $500 million. And the way the CBA is set up, there will be some amendments to it, but the real math for the players is that they get, in basketball-related income, in BRI, up just about half of the income. So to give up that money, to, to push back to January, which they could have done, would have cost the players $250 million. And in the end, I think there was an understanding, even though this is not what the players want, they do not want to do this, they understand it's not just in the NBA's best interest, it's also in their own financial best interest. And that it is when you're looking at prorated salaries. More games means more money. Uh, and the uh, the way that the players were headed towards this January start just wasn't allowing for that 72-game threshold affecting everybody's pocket. So some big-time math was being done. But simple math says we're less than a month removed from the confetti falling on an L.A. Lakers championship. And we are less than a month away from training camp for the next NBA season. How much of a disadvantage does this put those top teams a la Miami LA as opposed to some of the lower talent that has been on ice resting, getting ready for this season whenever the start date might be? They'll certainly tell you in an honest moment that it's a monumental challenge and a monumental problem, particularly for older players like a LeBron James. We know now in the NBA, players know, fans know, media know, GMs know, that the science of the game is such the more rest players can get, the less they play again and again and again, the more that their bodies hold up, the better the quality of the play. That's why we've seen over the last few years, back-to-backs become rare, three and four nights going away. I can remember as a reporter on, on the road doing three and four nights and back-to-backs again and again and again. That's become the thing of the past because that's just what's best for players in a normal season with a normal offseason. So you throw in the fact that that's gone away, and to your point, the teams like the Heat and teams like the Lakers are big basically going to blink and return to basketball it's going to be a problem there are certainly some concerns that there will be injuries and there's a question whether or not the NBA will be more lenient with some of those teams and some of those veterans if and when they decide to sit out when they're not technically injured because we know the league has tried to clamp down on that and the idea of players not being available when they're healthy. Yeah, load management uh, is going to be the topic du jour as it has been over the last few years here in the NBA. This year uh, going to be to another level if we are talking about year 18. LeBron James trying to get ready for a Christmas Day matchup with whoever it may be. Uh, Bill, still plenty to figure out here, as you mentioned. The CBA going to be amended a bit. Health and safety protocols still need to be outlined. What are the next steps in terms of negotiations and what the NBA and NBA PA are trying to figure out the good news is they, they've cleared the most significant hurdle the most contentious might be the the wrong word it's a good relationship between the players association and adam silver in the league office but the real difficulties in these negotiations was whether or not they are going to get back to basketball on december 22nd we know they are now we're going to get into some of the some of the the specific things are you going to have clustered travel where maybe you go to, if you're the Lakers, for example, you go to Houston, you play two games, you go to San Antonio, you play two games, more like a baseball series. There might be some financial things that need to be worked out, but those are going to be in the margins. The real news here, obviously, is that we're going to get back to basketball on December 22nd. Just briefly texting folks as we're getting this news, it sounds like there, there's a lot of confidence that all the little details won't be that significant in terms of any kind of roadblocks or hurdles going forward. Uh, in, the, in those conversations that you've had with the people that you're talking to around the league right now, obviously uh, dealing with the minutia of this deal, but uh, just a general reaction from the people you're talking to. Is there a level of excitement or is it marred by a bit of concern that we are turning around a little quickly here? 
Yeah, 2020, right? I think it's it's all of the above. I, I there, look, look. There, there's excitement that the NBA is going to be a functioning league in terms of the business of basketball. That is for all of us, whatever we do for a living. That was an uncertainty three, four, or five months ago. But, but Joe, there, there's a weariness, and there's a weariness from the players. There's a weariness from certainly media members, fr from GMs that I've talked to, from some assistant coaches that I've talked to, because there is not that that mental break, that physical break, that time with your family, whatever it is you're doing in the off season. So it's mixed. People are really glad that the NBA has a plan. They're going to make a bunch of money, and the league's going to be healthy, right? Healthy league is good for everybody involved in the NBA. But it's a really quick turnaround, and I think everyone is aware that they get to catch their breath for the next 30 seconds and then literally, starting now, get back to work. Circle it on the calendars, December 22nd. Bill Wright will be here on HQ breaking it all down. Thank you, Bill. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.